please like and subscribe. Let's grow in AI basketball. Thank you. Cascade Hoops Talk, bringing the world NAI basketball one podcast at a time. Cascade Hoops Talk, Billy D. Well, it's Wednesday. Uh, boy, we're really getting down to the last few games here in the conferences. What we're going to do today, we're going to go through, I think, 10 conferences, really break them down. Who's going to make the playoffs uh, as in, you know, how many teams make the playoffs? Where does everybody stand? You know, what play does the seeding come in? Uh, that kind of thing. Uh, so we'll go through 10 of them tonight and today, and then uh, we'll, we'll work our way through the rest of them uh, this week. But if you're anything like me, it uh, can be very confusing pulling all these conferences together and figure out where everything stands. So why don't we kick it off with the Crossroads League. So in the Crossroads League, obviously Grace is in the lead with Indiana Wesley and Bethel and Huntington. So let's take a look at this. So the top four teams, this is the standings as they are right now. Uh, They will, uh, these teams would host. So one versus eight to uh two versus seven and the host team or the the top four team always hosts and then the playoffs go through from there with the uh, highest seed always hosting you can see on these i started breaking them down but after you get past uh grace and perhaps huntington or taylor i mean it's it's really a hod- hodgepodge as where everybody's going to come in here but if if the playoffs happen today this is how it would line out. Now, this doesn't take into account tiebreakers. That'll come in a little bit later when the rest of the games are played. So in the next games, which are Wednesday, Taylor is going to take on Indiana Wesleyan. Key game for Taylor because they're in danger of dropping out of the uh, of the uh, playoff picture. Same way for Mount Zernan, go- Mount, Zernan Mount Vernon going over to St. Francis uh, to play there in uh, Fort Wayne. They're also in danger of dropping out of the playoffs. Grace is going to play Huntington. Big uh, implications for Huntington. They're battling for a home playoff game. Marion and Bethel, we talked about that the other night. Uh, th- that is going to be a very big game. You know, Bethel and Marion, they, they could finish anywhere from third to sixth. And then uh, Spring Arbor is at Goshen. Really doesn't have much to do with the, the uh, tournament matchups. So two teams are going to make the tournament, the regular season, and the tournament champion. So if hopefully that's confused you very, very much. So that's in the Crossroads League. Let's take a look at the. Let's take a look at the uh, Sooner Athletic Conference. By the way, there's a Langston game last night, but I don't have score yet. Uh, Same way, it's a it's a one through eight. And. These top four will, you know, one host eight, two versus host seven, three uh, host six, like that. Again, I started breaking it down. But when look at this, between second and what is this, sixth, I mean, these teams could, John Brown could jump up to second and Wayland Baptist could go down to sixth at this point. Uh, so it's, it's pointless to try to figure that out. But we do know that Oklahoma City has to play uh, Texas Wesleyan. And Texas Wesleyan, look at this, they're right there on that line. And uh, I'm not sure if there's enough time for Oklahoma City to uh, get into that top eight, but uh, Texas Wesleyan is in danger of dropping out of that. Uh, um, Southwestern Christian at UNT Dallas. Uh, John Brown, Science and Arts, look at these two teams. And they both are still trying to get a home playoff game. They got to get above that line. And then Mid America Christian at Sagu, huge playoff implications. Either of these teams, any of these teams could drop into the bottom four and end up going on the, the road. And then uh, Wayland Baptist at Langston, Wayland Baptist, uh, again, they, these teams just have to keep winning because I'll say it again Wayland Baptist is second. And they could drop all the way down to fifth or sixth and end up playing on the road. So in the Sooner Athletic Conference, two teams 
make the tournament the regular season and the tournament champion. That's pretty common. The most common scenario you find is it's eight teams, a regular season champion and tournament champion make the, the cut in the uh, Cascade Conference. Same thing, one and eight. Uh, one and eight, two, same thing, two and seven. So at this point, Lewis or College of Idaho, uh, they're pretty well locked to win the conference at this point. Uh, the number eight slot, Northwest Multnomah, Walla Walla, are all battling for that. They're within a game. And that, and that is going to be very fluid uh, over the next two weeks. Oregon Tech and LC State, they're battling for that second spot. And then Corbin right now, of course, they're tied with these three other teams, and I'm not sure how the tiebreaker goes, but Corbin Bushnell and Southern Oregon are all battling for a home playoff game. So we, we really have to you know, watch the – there's four games left in the Cascade Conference. Again, two teams, regular season – and tournament champion. You know, this is amazing. Multnomah, which went on the road and beat Arizona Christian, went on the road and beat OUAZ, are in uh, real danger of not even making the Cascade Conference playoffs. Uh, in the KCAC, um, it, it appears to it, Whoops, sorry about that. Oklahoma Wesleyan only has a one-game lead, uh, but I'm not sure who's going to step up and beat them. But uh, Oklahoma Wesleyan, Southwestern, Kansas Wesleyan, they look pretty well locked in for a home, uh, home playoff. Uh, Evangel, they're battling here with McPherson for that fourth spot. And then right here, Bethel and Tabor and York are all kind of battling for that eighth, eighth spot. So Oklahoma Wesleyan is playing York. Uh, boy, York, York needs a win, but I'm not sure they're going to get that upset there. Evangel needs the win at Bethany. It's a game they should be expected to win. They really need that to maintain that home playoff game. Uh, Sterling and, and Avila, they're pretty low in the stand. He's McPherson and Ottawa right here. They're, they're really battling, uh, right? Uh, I can't really say battling. Seven and eight losses. I'm not sure if Ottawa can get up above into that number four spot, but it's a big game for both of them. McPherson really needs the win. And Kansas Wesleyan needs the win because they're still trying to chase uh, second place with Southwestern there, Bethel and Tabor, and, um, well, Friends and, and uh, Southwestern. I can't remember how many games. There's not very many games left in that conference. I think four. I could be wrong. Over in the Mid-South, everybody makes the playoffs. Uh, there's seven teams. I'm not sure how they are going to do the tournament with the odd number. I'm imagining the bottom two are going to play to even it out, but we'll have to see. Only one team is going to make the, the championship. That's uh, the tournament champion, and uh, they'll get an automatic bid. So the seeding in the tournament, it's all played in one place. They're going to play it over in Bowling Green, and the regular season uh, conference will determine the seeding uh, and then uh, at the tournament site the higher ranked team will be the home team so on Thursday you can see uh, Lindsey Wilson playing Cumberland's Cumberland needs that win they're trying to win the conference Campbellsville and Bethel uh, doesn't have too many implications in the conference and then Freed Hardman at uh, Cumberland uh, that's a game Freed Hardman could definitely lose. Uh, and that, that still gives uh, Georgetown a little bit of hope to get up into that third position, their second position. Over in the uh, Wolverine Hoosier Conference. Sorry, I lost my place here for a second. This is why I'm only going through 10 of these because I know it's probably going to put you brain dead to sleep. But Madonna is a game up on Lords. This is another conference. Top four are going to host the bottom four, one, eight, two, seven, et cetera. And the higher rated seed is home. So you always want that first round home play a game, that first round playoff game at home. So Madonna needs the win. They're going to play Concordia, a game they should win. A Concordia really needs a win because they're trying to break into that top eight. Uh, Cornerstone playing Clary, you know, 
A couple weeks ago, it would look like an automatic win. Clary is playing better. Cornerstone, though, really needs to stay within that top four. Uh, they want to play there in Grand Rapids. And then here's the game on Wednesday. Lords is at Lawrence Tech. So Lawrence Tech is really a tough out at home. Lords has been struggling lately. Lawrence Tech is trying to uh, get into that top four so they can hope host that first round playoff game. Rochester is at Siena Heights and then Michigan Dearborn and Indiana Tech. So Indiana Tech, they're also trying to get into that top four. Uh, they should win against Michigan Dearborn, Lawrence Tech, uh, is playing Lords. I mean, it, there's all kinds of combinations that could happen here, uh, but there's really going to be a lot of jockering, jockeying for three, four, five, and even six. Again, the real objective, as you know, as a fan, is you want that first round playoff game to be at your house. Uh, in the Southern states, Tennessee Southern, they're going to win the conference. This is a little bit different. So these four teams play in the first round. And uh, see, I got it over here. Yeah, seven and ten. So seven and ten will play, and then eight and nine. And those teams come up and they form a round of eight with these other six. So you really want to stay. You want to get that first round by and not be part of this four that has to play the extra game. Uh, it looks like that line is with six losses to ten losses. It looks like that line is pretty well drawn. Uh, but we'll have to watch it. So games coming up. Faulkner is playing at Thomas. Big big implications here for uh, this seeding. Honestly, I'm not sure if that seeding is going to make a lot of difference. Uh, Still, Stillman at Dalton State. Big game for Dalton State. They need to win. Well, there, there are four games up, but it's a you know they're trying to they're trying to stay above Thomas here, and then Point and Bruton Parker. Uh, they're both a little bit out of it in the frontier conference so what you want to do here is you want to finish in the top two and honestly this is a a two-team race with montana tech and carroll these two will get a first round bye and then uh these two will play or these four will play each other and um they'll, that'll get what one two one two three four and then that'll get the semifinals. So you really want to be in the top one or two. It's pretty well set. Uh, Providence has to play Carroll on Thursday. And then Montana Tech and Carroll play on Saturday. So Carroll has an opportunity to try to make some hay and maybe catch Montana Tech. But we'll have to see. I, Montana Tech's playing really good. And all the, all the people at Carroll are going to get mad. But I think con Montana Tech's going to win that conference. Oh, here we go. The G-Pack. This right here is clear as mud. Once I go through this, you'll know exactly what's going to happen in the G-Pack. Again, it's eight teams. One versus eight. Two versus seven. Three versus six. Okay, look at this. You tell me who's going to play who. I mean, who's even going to be in the top four? It's uh, it, 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 The top five look pretty well set. These will probably be the top five. Uh, but how they're going to match up, I just gave up trying to figure out or even trying to guess. So let's take a look, look at this. Hastings is going to play Mount Marty. That's a game they, they, they should win and they need to win to stay in that top four. Jamestown is in that eight. They got a good enough kish, cushion. They'll make it. But Dort is trying to overtake Morningside. So Dort has a lot to lose in this game uh, with Jamestown. So Jamestown has to go to Dort. Northwestern and Briarcliff, uh, that's regardless of these standings, that's going to be a great game. But uh, Northwestern is trying to catch Concordia for the conference championship. Concordia, they have to go to Doan. And look, I don't look at Doan's record. I guarantee, <laughs> I guarantee you that'll be a good game. And then Dakota Wesleyan and Morningside. Morningside needs a win desperately because they're in danger of not having a home playoff game. And Dakota Wesleyan is always, always hard to beat at home. Uh, they're this team two teams regular 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 uh season and tournament champion okay i purposely only went through 10 of them uh because it's it's a little bit it's a little bit convoluted but i just tried to give you a, a little bit of a picture with what these 
uh, conference races are looking like. Uh, through the week, obviously, we'll have more games. This is a really light game night. I think there's only three games. Uh, but we'll try to pull all the conferences up so we can keep we can keep you up with who's going to get a home playoff game, who's going to win the conferences. And I hope you appreciate uh, that. And I'll see you soon, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. And I hope you have a good day and a good night. Thank you very much for supporting our podcast. Please like and subscribe. Get out to your local NAI school because NAI basketball is the best entertainment value in America.